Mark Yu is a seven-year-old like no other. While his friends are putting on their pajamas to get ready for bed, Mark gets dressed for a classical concert. But not to watch. He's come to play. Ladies and gentlemen, we are holding five minutes for the house. Five minutes for the house, scheduled for an 805 start. Mark can play more than 40 classical pieces from memory. I like especially difficult ones and the ones that my teacher says no. My teacher says no because there are too many uh -huh. off case. What is it that makes gifted children so special? Do they just work harder than others? Or are they born with brilliant brains? It's a tense day for Mark and his mother, Chloe. They are going to the LA Philharmonic for an audition. Okay, and after the Hina story, you can tell him that you have played with different, five different professional orchestras in the past year. Are you listening, Mark? Are you listening? Mark has been invited to play for Vasily Sanaisky, a world-famous conductor. And also you can play him the Chopin Nocturne. Don't, don't ask him, okay? If you ask him, he might say, go home. Are you listening? Maestro Sinaiski has seen talents come and go. Getting this man's ear for 10 minutes is a rare privilege for anyone, let alone a little boy. I think that we've always been fascinated with kids who do things at the wrong age. And this is what gifted kids do. They do things at the wrong age. They're not supposed to be doing things so advanced. So they shock us. They surprise us. They seem like little adults in child bodies. And we want to figure out how it's possible. Ellen Winner has spent the last 15 years studying gifted children. Today she's come to visit Mark. fingers are very nimble. What do you want to be when you grow up? Isn't that obvious? I want to be a psychiatrist. No, just joking. <laughs> a musician. So I want to know how your mom first discovered that you were so musical. There was one day when I went to a party and I heard the melody of Mary had a little lamb, and I played the tune on the piano. Really? Yeah. How old were you? Two. While they were singing, he jumped on it and played the whole Mary had a little lamb, and I've never taught him how to play the piano. And did he get it completely right? Oh, yeah. Stories like Mark seem to defy logic, but science is beginning to shed light on the enigma of God-given talent. A growing brain is both vulnerable and extremely malleable. You do it like that, until it's really pointy. Can you see my wrist? Mark's mother exploited this quality to teach him one of the most complex languages in the world. Yeah, that means a person. With two licks. Yeah. 
<laughs> Mark's first three years, I spoke to him in Cantonese exclusively. He did not learn how to speak English or another language until he started school when he was three years old. And I'm teaching him little by little Mandarin. That's why I made a right decision to teach him Cantonese in the very beginning. It's the hardest language to pick up later on in life. Stimulation is essential for a growing brain. By the time a baby is born, it has already done 12 weeks worth of listening. Very often a child's first memory is a melody. When Mark's mother, Chloe, was a little girl, she really wanted to play the piano. But her parents followed Chinese tradition and lavished all the musical education on her elder brother. So when Chloe was having Mark, she immersed him in a world of music to give him what she herself was denied. During my pregnancy, I would play the same piece over and over again, hoping that by the time when he was born, he could hum me a fifth symphony by Beethoven. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, it actually happened when he, about the time when he started talking, he was humming the same symphonies that I've been playing to him since I was pregnant. Chloe certainly didn't waste any time with Mark's education. But is there actually any point in starting this early? This is especially so with music, where starting early is the norm. But is an early start enough to make a genius? This is Mark's first public performance, at the age of three. Within one year, Mark had moved on from Mary Had a Little Lamb. Beethoven, right, Mom? Oh, no, it's by Mozart. <laughs> no, it's by Beethoven. How long did it take him to learn that? Not too long. Mm. Not too long. That piece is only about four pages. And he was three then? Yeah, he was three then. Wow. Ellen Winner believes that gifted kids are born with something extra, something their upbringing cannot explain. I don't think that most three-year-olds would be able to do that, even if they were given the regimen of training that Mark had. That was not a typical child. Could it be that Mark inherited his gift? Is there a gene for genius? has a rare gift. Perfect pitch. F E D C. <laughs> I already know. Perfect pitch is really a very well developed memory. Some people have this ability to remember from very early ages with precision exactly what frequencies sound like. They know that 440 sounds like that. But what blew me away was Chloe saying he's never studied it. Major. Jeff Bernstein, a distinguished musician, is intrigued to know just how good Mark's ear really is. To Mark, identifying a musical note is as easy as naming a color. Only one in 10,000 people have this gift. Perfect pitch doesn't make you a musical genius, but it certainly helps. The talent in some musicians is so striking that to the casual observer it looks like they must have inherited this gift in their genes. So is there such a thing as a gene for genius? So genetics only gives us these propensities to seek things out in the environment. So kids with genetic propensities, say to musical ability or reading or sports, they actually 
um, as they make their way in the world, select and create and modify environments to kind of foster the development of their ability. So that little differences early can become bigger and bigger differences as kids grow up and make their way in the world. <laughs> To say that Mark Yu has a propensity for music is a massive understatement. His whole world revolves around it, from dawn to dusk, seven days a week. He now practices up to eight hours a day and says he loves every minute of it. What started as a propensity has now grown into an obsession. I do not believe that you can take an ordinary child and turn that child into a prodigy. Why don't I believe it? Well, I'll give you two reasons. First of all, you can't force an ordinary child to practice six hours a day. They simply won't, and they can't. They'll fall apart. And second of all, there are too many reports of children at a very young age, doing astonishing things before they've had any training. I studied a child at two years of age. He asked his mother to read him a particular book. And he asked her to read him that book out loud, pointing to the words as she read. And he watched. And he asked her to repeat this every day for a week. Then he brought her a second book and asked her to repeat this for a second week. At the end of two weeks, he knew how to read. He never wanted to be read to again. He had cracked the code of reading. Gifted children are not just born with aptitude, but an iron will to succeed. Mark has just bullied his mom into letting him ride without stabilizers for the first time in his life. He has never done it before. What's the trick? Just to grab him back here. You run. Oh, I see. Don't let go. Chloe is understandably anxious, but Mark doesn't want her help. He wants to crack this on his own. Really gifted kids drive themselves. I call it a rage to master. Um, some people don't like the word rage because it reminds them of anger, but I like the word because it, it really captures the intensity. Sometimes the parents are running along after these kids trying to catch up, trying to keep up. So I think one of the signs of a truly gifted child is a child who has this rage to master. A child who wants to play the piano, for example, who wants to practice voluntarily. Most kids do not want to practice voluntarily. A kid who you cannot drag away. When he falls in love with a certain piece of music, he would sleep and eat and basically live with the music. He would always have this melody ringing in his mind. He said, Mom, I can't go to bed. Even when after he fell asleep, he woke up in the middle of the night and said, Mom, can I go down and practice a little bit on that? I wanted to sneak out of the room and practice it silently, but my mom's constantly sneaking out. Do you like easy pieces or difficult pieces? especially difficult ones, and the ones that my teacher says no. Gifted kids think and learn differently. When they do the thing they love, they enter into an altered state of mind. You have a child who's motivated, and I think that the motivation is connected to the high ability. If you have high ability to learn, things come easily to you, you get a kind of a flow out of it. 
flow is a state which all of us get into at certain times where we're intensely occupied with some activity and we lose all sense of time. Gifted musicians get tremendous joy from playing. The more they play, the better they get, so they enjoy it even more. It's a virtuous cycle of accelerated learning. Many parents may wish their child had a rage to master, but raising a gifted child is very hard work. Do you still remember how to dissect an angle? Especially for a single mother. Chloe has been teaching Mark at home since he was six. My sleep is very deprived. It's an average four to six hours of sleep every day. I wake up at least two hours before he does every morning just to prepare and to answer all his questions. <laughs> He's a very inquisitive child, always asking lots of questions, stupid or not. So the formula would just be 180 minus 80 divided by 2. Yeah. Mark's studying the maths curriculum for 14-year-olds, way ahead of his peers. Two sides are congruent. The opposing angles will be congruent too. Okay. The biggest problem is he is at a different cognitive level compared to other kids his own age. He got very frustrated talking to other kids at his own age about uh, history, about composers, they had no idea what he was talking about. That's why I like homeschooling. And I had to realize that a normal school setting is not something for my son. Insatiable intellectual appetite comes at a price. These children have a lot of trouble in school because they're so different from other kids. Another problem is friends. They're often socially isolated because they're so different from other kids they can't find kids to be friends with. Gifted children are in danger of being labeled as freaks. What is a normal life? I don't know. I guess he's uh, different from other normal kids is that he doesn't watch that much TV and no video games. He spends more time on reading, libraries, uh, playing outside in a park, stuff like that. That is what's abnormal about him, I guess. Happily. Despite his very grown-up persona, Mark has no shortage of friends of his own age. I like him as a friend and a piano player. Yes, I like him. Okay. But the piano is talk. It's not a pianoist. Oh, pianist. <laughs> Like, if I'm just sitting on the couch minding my own business, <laughs> like this, that was here he comes running in the door and he tackles me. You look at Mark and you think this is exactly right for him. He's a wonderful boy. He's not awkward. He's not withdrawn. He's very sociable. Um, he's brilliant and he knows it, but he doesn't, that he's not defined by it. He's also a boy. He just would like to squeeze every other minute out of the day and put it into the piano. Happy Octave to you. Today Mark celebrates a momentous occasion, bigger than a birthday. He's eight years and 34 days old today. His fingers are finally long enough to span eight keys on the piano. Bravo. He's crossed this big milestone of playing an octave, which for an adult is, is a trivial task. It's easy. I mean, I can play a tenth all the time and an eleventh if you break something. And, uh, 
you know, but for Mark, that's been a goal for a long, long time. And you start to realize there's lots of piano music that depends on the ability to play an octave that he hasn't been able to touch yet. Now the world of grown-up music beckons. But as Mark gets older, he'll have to meet quite different expectations. Everybody claps and thinks it's wonderful if a six-year-old plays the piano beautifully. By the time that six-year-old is 18, nobody cares anymore if he plays technically beautifully. They only are going to be interested in that, child, that teenager if he plays in a new way, if he plays in a really creative way. And so you have to go from being a prodigy to being a creator. Mozart made that transition. He went from being a child prodigy to being a creative genius, and that's rare. That's why I'm, I'm actually very concerned about making children famous because they continue, they want that fame to continue. Any child would want that fame to continue. And it's unlikely to. For every prodigy that succeeds, there are many others that crash and burn. Puberty is a big hurdle for gifted kids. And it's not just hormones that cause trouble. At puberty, the brain has another go at cutting back connections. It's use it or lose it all over again. And the part that matures last is a brain area a teenager really needs, the prefrontal cortex, seat of judgment and self-control. This area isn't normally finished until the age of 20. With biology and psychology conspiring against him, what are Mark's chances of ever becoming a great musician? Today is a big day for Mark. He's going to meet his hero. Long Long is one of the biggest stars in classical music today. He started playing the piano in China when he was three years old and worked his way up to the top of the classical music game. Now he fills concert halls all over the world, 150 days a year. Long Long is the man Mark wants to be when he grows up. Every time I practice, I think of him practicing very hard, which makes me practice very hard too. I love to go to Carnegie Hall and perform there. I love to perform with many great orchestras, just like Long Long. Mark has been invited backstage for an audience with Long Long. They've met several times before, and Mark almost dares to call Long Long a friend. Today is special, because Mark has spent months practicing a duet and now he wants to play it with his idol. Can you pedal here? Because of the octaves? Because mm. sure. I'll have to jump. Mm -hmm. Lang Lang is happy to indulge Mark's enthusiasm because he knows exactly what it's like to be in his shoes. the pitfalls of puberty only too well. Once you are a child prodigy, when you're growing up, everybody is watching you, and most of people like to see you're doing great, but some people also like to see that you're not so good. When I was 15, I started a new direction of playing. I like to play the hardest piece. I like to show people, you know, how good I am. I had this, what do you call the backlash. After getting all the great reviews, then I start getting really horrible reviews. It's like a nightmare. And then you need to think very carefully and to, to find yourself back. Long, 
Lang Lang is determined to support Mark in any way he can. Today, he has something very special to tell him. I'd like to invite Mark to, to play Carnegie Hall with me uh, in uh, 2009. Um, and also probably the, the music for I hope to. Yeah. yeah. So after two years practicing, I think he's, he's ready for it. That would be pre pretty cool. Ten years old debut at Cardi. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> this is a big promise. The stakes are now higher than ever, and so is the pressure. I hope that Carnegie Hall 2009 thing is not a joke. Also, I hope he's serious about it. Tonight, it's not Carnegie Hall. It's a local theater 10 miles away from Mark's home. Mark's journey so far has been an amazing ride. He's shown skill, intelligence, and motivation worthy of a grown-up. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we're sharing with you the imagination, dreams, and the journey to success through the eyes of a child. Let's meet Mark Yu. But the most amazing thing about him is something only a child can give us. Part of what tickles us inherently about a prodigy like this is what it's like when adult abilities are incarnate in a child. The possibilities are extraordinary for a child with a child's imagination and a child's heart. They inhabit a world that's much more about imagination and play and fantasy. I think that's what's exciting and what's got us all on the edge of our seats about Mark. Um, if Mozart could see this, he'd probably be pretty pleased.